G'day and welcome to the Breathless Blog version number three. Thanks for stopping by. Now, if you're a first time watcher to this crazy idea of a blog, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Brody Grogan. I'm a photographer here based in Brisbane who owns and operates, funnily enough, Brody Grogan Photography. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had this crazy thought of starting my blog immediately after a run while I was hot and sweaty and trying to catch my breath and just about cooked um, and just unloading all of the creative ideas or things that I've been speaking or thinking about during that run or during the week or things that have just been playing on my mind and sharing that with uh, the people that you know love to follow my work but also the people that I want to get to know and would love to be involved in the storytelling parts of their life through my photography so welcome. Um, bringing up to speed a little bit for those who did check out edition number two um, you'll know that I spoke about a wedding that was coming up, but while I was so, so looking forward to it, there was a few tinges of sadness and a little bit of stress attached to that wedding because for that couple, they did have some some pretty sad stuff happen to them in the couple of weeks uh, out from their wedding in that they'd lost uh, a couple of really close people um, in their lives. Um, what I you know, can share with you, and it just warms my heart so much, is that their wedding day was absolutely beautiful. They had such a wonderful day. And, you know, while there were some some periods of, of some sadness and um, reflection on the people uh, that, had, that had, you know, passed away in the, in the week leading in, um, they also, by embracing it, actually, you know, were able to share in in a lot of really, really happy, amazing moments of their day with the people that mattered to them mattered to them most so um and you know it was actually a day that just reminds me time and time again that you know i just have the best i wouldn't even call it a job you know it's just the best opportunity to spend time with people and, and help capture you know their story and, and pour my heart and my passion into a small part of their lives you know in a wedding day such a special day so i just was really humbled and and honored to spend some time with them so following on from the weekend it actually it actually got me thinking about what i do to prepare for a wedding as a photographer what are the types of things that i'm doing to to make sure that i bring my best self and turn up to be the best that i can be um, for my clients on their wedding day sorry i'm just rearranging myself getting rid of some sweat here <coughs> um and the first thing that springs to mind is that that journey actually starts a long, long, long time before we even get to wedding day. So as soon as a couple inquires to me as to whether I'm free and would love to photograph their wedding, that's game on. That's exactly from where it starts for me as to thinking about how I'm going to best get some photographs to honour their wedding day. So the first thing that I always really like to do is catch up with my, my couples and clients because, you know, for me to get to know them, but just as important probably more importantly it's about them getting to know me um, you know we're about to go and spend so much time on one of the most important biggest days of their life um, it's always a good opportunity and a good idea I think um, to build some rapport as early as you can so that you know by the time I turn up and start waving cameras around and um, you know mixing with their nearest and dearest they already know me now we're already on the well on the way to, to having a great day together. So that's really, really important to me. And that's not like, you know, it has to be all that formal. I've caught up with people in parks and pubs for beers, for, you know, coffees, for dinner, for breakfast, for whatever it is. Just a nice little time to catch up and get to know each other. Job number one. Job number two then is sometime between that meeting but then their wedding day is for me myself to go and do a, a bit of a stakeout a recce go and do some homework at the venue so at the place they're going to be married for their ceremony but also their reception venue um, our location where we're going to spend time getting some post ceremony shots that's so so important because i want to be able to bring um, a timely efficient manner to what is a hectic day so that i can project a sense of calmness um, but also in being efficient with the time that we have, especially in that window between ceremony and reception, I want to know that the time we spend together is spent as well as we possibly can. So by doing a recce, just as I did on the Friday, just gone, heading into the wedding, I just want to go and check out, righto, what locations do we have? Where's the light coming from? You know, the, the best case scenario for that checkout is to do it at the time that I'm going to be spending there on the day. 
Now, if, uh, if I had a, a dollar for every time that I went and did my recce and formulated a plan A and B, but then on a wedding day went to plan C and D, I'd be a very rich man. Even the weather changes, right? My recce day is overcast, the wedding day is sunny, or what, you know, whatever it is. But that's okay because I'd much rather do that and have not so much preconceived cement locked in ideas for the types of images I'm gonna create, but I certainly just wanna have a few options up my sleeve. You know, all right, if it rains, where can we go? What can we do? You know, other opportunities for bride and groom to seek shelter. If it's sunny, all right, where's the sun gonna come from? What light am I probably gonna to have to play with? Um, you're just little things like that, that just help you prepare to get your head into the creative space that you need to be in. Because chances are, even like something that happened on Saturday itself, to paint a picture, ceremony plan to start at 3.30. But as just about every wedding I've ever photographed, it always starts a little bit late and that's fine. Half an hour of ceremony gets us to about quarter past four. We've then got about half an hour of um, hugs and kisses and love bombing from family, which is terrific. And I always want to try and stretch it out for my couples as long as I can because it's such a beautiful special time, but also then trying to get some family photos done. Even in autumn here in Queensland, we're starting to lose last light by about 20 to six. So I know then that I've got less than an hour in that post ceremony slot to pick up the photographs with um, the bride and groom, but then um, the bridal party as well. It's not a lot of time, but I can tell you that from being well planned and having a few plans in place and knowing exactly where we're gonna go, not having to rush, Still having plenty of time to, you know, for the bridal party to pick through their cheese hamper and have a few drinks and have a few laughs and actually enjoy the moment. That is so important because the last thing that they would ever want is to have a pushy photographer stressing, trying to run them through an hour, overcommit, rather than just projecting calm effectively, managing people. And that's exactly what we did. We had the best time. We had such a great time. So just that preparation goes a long way. Um, and by speaking of preparation, you don't wanna be thinking about whether you've, you know, as a photographer, your you know, memory cards are formatted or your batteries are charged or if you've got all your lens and stuff, that has to happen the day before. So then you can head hits the pillow and even then, if you've got any thoughts about the next day, they're ones of creativity, emotion, storytelling. Always the first point of call to start with. So when I wake up on actual wedding day, I, I just don't wanna be rushing. Um, on Saturday, I went out for breakfast, went to a cafe, I you know, ordered my coffee, got a, a good sized breakfast because I know that the chances are that that meal that I eat at eight o'clock in the morning, that's the last time I'm gonna eat for at least 10 hours. Uh, I don't tend to eat lunch. That's just me during that day, probably because my brain is just running quite at quite a high pace in terms of the creativity side of it. I know I just don't tend to eat. So stock up in the morning, of course, you know, take your snacks and whatnot and have a pick at food um, if you're invited to do so as you go, but um, that's just the way I work anyway. Um, I'm sure others have different approaches and probably look at me for being a little bit crazy for not eating, but um, where am I up to? Now, oh, it's so important. So, and it was something that I only thought of actually while I was eating my breakfast on the weekend was that it's almost like an involuntary preparation that I start to go through before I get to wedding um, during the morning is that even as I'm sitting in that cafe I'm starting to people watch and not people watch in a creepy way but I'm, I'm people watching in terms of photography skill set and how that meets storytelling I'll explain I'm sitting there waiting for my brekkie to arrive but I'm also looking at where the light's coming into the room I'm looking at what lines and patterns and textures that I've got available to me and it's almost like if someone said to me there and then, right, we're having a wedding here in two minutes. You need to photograph it. What are you going to do? Where are you going to pose people? How are you going to take photographs that tell a story and reflect uh, the beauty and the joy and the emotion that's happening with the people, but also using the surrounds to do that best? You know, so the, the people watching element comes into how light falls across their skin. Where would I stand? Would I be low or high to try and get the best vantage point? 
okay? How would I oppose people? Just things like that. It's almost like living in a, a bit of a fantasy world there for a while, but that's just helping me dial in, dial in my thinking into how I'm gonna go about getting the photographs I need to for the day. And above all else, look, weddings as a photographer, you know, in my you know, experience in the last few years, yes, photographs are what it's about, and that's why you know, people trust people like myself and photographers to, to come and photograph their day. But it's about the way we engage with people. At any given wedding day, as a photographer, I'm dealing with people when they're emotional. And emotional's not a bad word. Emotional's really, really happy, joyous, so happy they're crying. In some instances, you know, those tears aren't always necessarily ones of happiness. They're ones of built up months of stress and anticipation. So just being aware of how people are feeling, how they're interacting, and then taking a breath and thinking, right, how can I absolutely give the best value here right now? And there's been countless times over the years there where for, for brides, grooms, you know, we're sitting in a car going somewhere together, we're in a room sharing a bit of silence for the want of a better term. And while we've only met over a cup of coffee a few months before, while we've only really spent time during that day, there's moments of connection and moments of um, support effectively. So, um, you know, oh, I just want to know that I can offer the best that I possibly can for those people on that day. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's probably the prep side of things. You know, it's allowing yourself to be well prepared and then just getting out of your own way. You know, not being too overly preconceived, actually having your eyes up and your mind open as to what's happening in front of you so that, you know, you've got, you've got a set of photography tools in your toolkit. Even as a hobbyist, even as a professional, you've got experiences and knowledge that you've acquired over, whether it's days, over years, they're yours and they're individual to you and how you're going to see the world and how you're going to tell that story. So for you just to be able to, I think, trust that you will take the photographs, you know, the best that you can, but invest your energy into people, invest into their story and how you can best tell their story. You'll get sick of me talking about it, but that's what I'm passionate about because I know that's when we as creative people and photographers make the best work. So thank you so, so much for stopping by um, and sharing in the, yeah, just a bit of knowledge about preparation for weddings and as a photographer and what it might look like. But I need to go and have a shower, I reckon. <laughs> um, hey, if you'd like to subscribe and see and share in more of the journey that I have as a photographer from week to week, day by day, and the interactions I have with people and what I shoot, then please subscribe. I'd love to have you along on the journey. Uh, and as I always will say, drop a comment in below, send us an email, flick us an inbox through Facebook, Insta, whatever it is. Give us a call, send us an email, whatever it might be. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you've got any questions, please let us know. And until next week, I'll, um, yeah, go and recover from this, this run. Um, and thanks so much again for stopping by. Over and out.